Hey, hey, what up, friends? All right, so today we are cooking a 20 pound brisket. So brisket is an awesome meat because traditionally the way that you cook it is, um, well, at least in Texas, you just put salt and pepper on it and then um, you slow cook it over time and it's ready to go. It's great for people who are on keto or people who are just um, looking to lower the calorie of their food. Again, it is a kind of a fatty cut of meat. I don't have the exact numbers, but I'll probably put it up somewhere like by pound how many calories um, and grams of protein are in each pound of brisket. Again, you know, it's just meat and fat. You know, it's, it's not gonna be worse than bacon and bacon is already pretty good. Um, in, in my opinion, I think bacon is pretty good in regards to the um, calorie to protein ratio. It's, you know, it's better than a chocolate cake and it tastes just as good. So anyway, I digress with all that. So today's plan is I have a 20 pound brisket. So this thing is huge and I have a 22 and a half inch Weber Smoky Mountain. So, um, you know, I was already measuring it. I think the brisket is like 23 inches long. And also I'm going to be using Harry Sue's brisket, uh, method, I guess, or his uh, trick that he does when he has an over large brisket, which is to put wood chunks under it to basically give it kind of like a rainbow shape. And that does two things. One, it'll help to fit the actual brisket on the grate. And second of all, it will prevent pooling on the surface of the uh, brisket so that the bark can set a lot easier without drying the meat. So plan of attack, basically, I'm going to fill up the um, charcoal grate with about 20 pounds of charcoal. Put, bury my wood underneath and um, basically just hold steady at about between 225 to like 245 and I'm going to be cooking for probably 20 plus hours. At about six to eight hours I'll probably wrap it with um, butcher paper that I have and then um, basically just ride out until we hit internal temps of about 203, 205 and then um, just rest that bad boy and then it should be ready for Christmas Eve. Another note too I wanna say is that this is my very first time making a brisket and this is gonna be the longest cook I've ever done on my smoker or done any type of smoking um, in my life. So again, I'm expecting that I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes but um, I just wanted to take you guys along with me and um, I think it'd be cool to just document because um, you know, this isn't gonna be my last brisket so. Um, you know, it'd be cool to see like how I do on the first try and um, how I start to improve. And, you know, I'd really appreciate anybody who has advice. You know, my barbecue will only get better if, um, you know, I have the input of others. So please let me know what you guys think. So um, with that being said, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I set up my fuel. So I'm using about eight chunks of wood. I'm using a mix of pecan and apple wood. So um, I have this like big hunkin' piece that I'm gonna put right in the middle. Right. So pretty much set up like that. And then basically I have this 20 pound bag of charcoal that I'm just gonna dump over the whole thing. Okay, so that's all 20 pounds. So now I'm gonna take my chimney and, oh, hold on, actually. So I'm gonna grab one of these uh, Weber lighter cubes Take it, I'm gonna have the chimney flipped upside down, put the charcoal or the starter cube right there. Then I'm just gonna grab a bunch of this charcoal that's in the middle. So you can't really see it that well, but there's like a hole in the middle of this pit right here. So basically once I light the charcoal in that chimney, and once it's ready and they've ashed over, I'm going to dump the charcoal right in the center of this hole right here. And this is called the minion method. Basically what's gonna happen is that the charcoal is gonna burn out very slowly outside the rim, slowly over time. And uh, that way it makes the charcoal last longer because again, I'm gonna be cooking for 20 hours. So looking at this thing is pretty intimidating. This is like, again, 20 pounds of meat. Um, I've never cooked anything to this scale or magnitude. And uh, this is a prime uh, brisket that I got from Costco. Um, this is actually like the smallest one they had. It's like 19.32 pounds. The other ones were like absolute monsters at like 22, 23, 21 pounds. And this was the smallest one that they had um, out there. So um, I grabbed this. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing open and start patting it dry.
Okay, so the next step now is to trim the brisket. Um, basically what you want to get rid of is like a lot of this like giant chunks of fat like this. And um, on the fat cap, which is the bottom half right here, we want to make sure that it's about a quarter of an inch thick. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to um, trim this side first, which is the, um, the meat side. So basically the way that I'm going to cook this thing is I'm going to have it with the um, leaner portion on the top. Um, you know, I've seen, I've done research and seen you can do it um, fat side up, fat side down. But uh, for me personally, I'm doing it fat side down. Reason being is that, again, I'm going to be monitoring this cook for the next, you know, however long it takes, 20 to 24 hours. And um, basically I'm going to be spraying it. So I'm not too concerned about um, having the fat cap on the top. On top of that, the um, fat will protect the meat on the other side because again, the fat is going to be on the actual grate which is gonna be hot and um, you know, I don't wanna ruin my bark. All that's to say, let's go ahead and trim this up. I'm noticing that this side is like super thin in comparison to this side. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna cut off a big hunk of this because the reason being is this is just gonna burn if I'm gonna cook it for 20 hours. So I'm gonna just cut it from about right here and just slice it completely off. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, you could save this and like combine it with all the fat you ripped off and grind it up, make sausages or make hamburgers or whatever. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cook this like kind of separately next to this brisket and um, kind of make like a mini brisket I guess with it and um, yeah I'm gonna see how that turns out cool so we're all trimmed up next thing we're gonna do is add our sauce to it So I'm gonna go ahead and let that rest before I put on my Montreal seasoning. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start up the chimney. We'll be monitoring this. It's already at 100. Once it hits about 210, we're gonna go ahead and put the brisket on and start shutting down some of the vents. So in the meantime, while this thing climbs up, we're gonna go ahead and put the Montreal seasoning on the brisket. Okay, cool. So once it comes up to temp, I'll go ahead and put it, um, put the briskets on. So as we can see, the probe is already reading at 223. So I'm going to immediately shut down these vents. I will check back in when I'm ready to spray in about three and a half, four hours. So um, it's been about three and a half hours. It's currently about 8.40 p.m. And um, as you can see on the barbecue pit, we're running right about like to a little bit below 250. Okay, so we definitely got some nice uh, darkness that's coming over it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my spray bottle. And on the parts where I see the meat is like kind of like getting dry, just gonna go ahead and spritz it up make sure that it's staying moist. And this is just uh, apple cider vinegar. So basically, from this point on, what I'm gonna do is every 45 minutes, I'm gonna open it up, spritz it, and keep doing that until I get a really nice dark, like almost black color to the bark. At that point, bark is set, then I'm ready to wrap, and then we're just gonna be tenderizing at that point. So it's currently 11.38, about 11.40, and um, about an hour ago, or maybe an hour and a half ago, uh, brisket junior was looking really nice so i'm going to cut off these ends because these are pretty burnt don't have a lot of juice to them and then just kind of like cut up this part right here that's really soft and nice and fat's nice and rendered down so yeah it got pretty burnt at the bottom as you can see but again it was temping really hot but at least this top part is nice squishy fat you have a little bit of meat on the inside so um 
yeah, this is just like little pieces of candy that I'm gonna give to um, my brothers who are here with me. Basically, here's what we're looking at with the brisket. So it's been on for about a little over seven hours. And as you can see, um, the sides are pretty much there. And the rest of it's tempting at about like 160 in the point, about 170 in the flat. Um, or I'm sorry, reverse, 170 in the point, um, 160 in the flat. So things are looking pretty good. So it is currently about 3 a.m. So the brisket has been on for close to like 11 hours, about 10 and a half hours. So, um, as we can see, coming on the brisket, we've got our bark pretty much set. Sorry, let me get a light on it. So as you can see, um, the fat on it is very um, yellow and is soft. The bark is pretty much set at this point. So at this point, it's time to wrap this thing. So um, I basically cut out two pieces of butcher paper that are just about the same length. And um, I'm gonna put this here for right now. Make sure it doesn't fall. So I'm gonna grab this thing. I'm gonna take our beautiful brisket, place it right here. this and I'm going to put this back on the grill and basically I'll just keep checking on this every like 30 minutes or so and I'm basically just probing the center of it the center of the flat to make sure that the probe goes in eat like butter basically that should be about 202 to 205 200 about 202 to 208 degrees Fahrenheit in the flat once it reaches that briskets ready I'm gonna go rest it for a while until it reaches about 140 degrees and then slice it up and we'll see what we have. All right, so it's currently 540. So we've been cooking for close to about 13 hours now and the brisket is just about ready. Because it ran a lot hotter than I thought it would, um, I'm done way earlier than I thought. Um, you know, it's like 530 in the morning. People aren't gonna be eating until like close or like 11 or 12 hours until now. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this thing in the cooler then. All right, so just wrap that up just like that. Close her up. Now I'm just gonna put this in the house and I'm hoping that it will keep its temperature above 150 until I'm ready to cut, but I will check it in about five or six hours and um, just go from there. Hey, hey, hey. So I just woke up and um, I opened up the uh, that I had and um, it was actually the brisket was temping at about 142. So I was like, okay, this is like, there's no way this is going to hold um, for another four or five hours. At that point, I just um, took it out, put it on a baking tray and I stuck it in the oven. So um, I have it currently at 170. Um, in our oven and I'm really hoping that it will hold. I'll probably keep it in the oven for about Maybe three three and a half hours. So I'm guessing around like 330. I'll probably um, Turn off the oven keep it in the oven and hopefully it'll um, just stay at a temperature like around 160 or maybe like 155 and then slowly come down from 155 to a cutting temp at around 5 um, I am a little bit paranoid that the um, brisket is going to dry out, even though I'm cooking it so low. And, um, <clears throat> you know, hopefully the meat doesn't um, hit a temperature where it's actually cooking in there. It's just keeping it warm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it just comes with the territory, this um, kind of anxiety about it drying out. Because, you know, I stayed up all night um, doing this brisket, and um, I just want to make sure that it's um, really good. So anyway, I will tune back in when it's time to cut. Okay, so it is 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. So it's been um, over 24 hours since I started this cook. So I basically had to keep this thing warm for the past 12 hours. So I'm a little nervous to see if it's um, still retained most of its juice, but I guess we'll find out now. So this is pretty much the moment of truth. So as you can see, the bark has been set super nice. It's super crusty beautiful it the 
flat in the point or like separating already. I can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my slices here. I know this is gonna be super burnt already. Like I mentioned before, this side was temping really hot really early in the cook. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just hunk this whole thing off and I'm gonna basically cube it up and put barbecue sauce on this part along with some portions of the point to do some uh, brisket burnt ends. So I'm gonna go ahead and find where the tenderness ends and then basically start the flat cuts then. This is the flat, it has beautiful um, juicy fat right there. The meat itself is actually pretty dry, but um, let's go ahead and cut some slices off. Okay. All right. So you guys wanna try some of this flat? I uh, sure do. All right. All right, let me see. Uh... All right. Mm, um. <laughs> good smoky flavor. <laughs> it is. The flavor is really good. Fats rendered it out perfectly. However, it is pretty dry. I'm hoping as I go deeper into the meat, it will get moister. So let's just keep going. And then we're gonna take our chunks right here, put them all in here. Some of those dry pieces will mix well with these like fatty bits. What I'm gonna do is just take this barbecue sauce stubs. So yeah, again, just gonna dress these up nice and covered in the sauce. Not perfect in any way, but I think not bad for a first time cooking brisket. And there you have it, my very first brisket. All in all, I'm pretty down on myself for the first uh, attempt. Um, brisket Junior was a failure. Uh, brisket Senior was a failure. Um, both in the flat and the point of the big brisket was way too dry. My main problem was just running the pit temps way too high. So it was running probably at like 350 for most of the cook. So just a note to myself is that when the pit temps go up, you have to adjust your strategy. And I definitely didn't. I probably should have wrapped it a lot faster than I did. And the flat would have been saved for that. Um, I, and I could have just rested it longer um, instead of putting it in the oven. I mean, that if it was dry once I took it out of the cooker and then put it inside of the cooler, putting it in the oven for an extra uh, six hours or however long it was sitting in there, that absolutely just dried my flat out completely. But I still feel optimistic because again, this is my first brisket and I can only improve from here. So I'm definitely feeling good about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and sign out and I will catch you guys on the next video.